Hi, uh, my name is Jessica Pinn, and I'm just going to make this short video to educate everyone about the clitoris. Um, I'm going to cover much more detailed anatomy than is typically covered in videos like this. And the reason why it matters is because I need lay women to understand how simple this anatomy is and how ridiculous and unsafe it is that doctors who operate on vulvas are not taught this anatomy. You're probably not believing what I'm saying, um, but until last year, this anatomy was not in any OBGYN textbooks or journals. It is generally not taught to OBGYNs. It is generally not taught to urologists. And it is generally not taught to plastic surgeons. Urologists operate on vulvas, OBGYNs operate on vulvas, and plastic surgeons do cosmetic surgery on vulvas. So when they don't know the anatomy, it puts patients at risk. Personally, my clitoris was damaged when I was 18 due to ignorance of this anatomy. And after my surgery, I was told my loss of function was all in my head. So I've since published a study and I have my Instagram and I try and share the anatomy as much as I can. Um, but I realize I need to figure out how to maybe use YouTube as well. And this is just a practice video. I'm going to redo it after I get feedback. Um, and hopefully after I decorate my office so it doesn't look like so ridiculous. Um, so here is my drawing of a clitoris. It is not ideal and I may need to make a new one. Um, but uh, basically, this has been shared on my Instagram before already. Uh, I'm folding the sides. Okay, so basically, this is the glands, and that's the part that sticks out. Um, and I used to have a colorful vulva, but I accidentally threw it away. Here's my little vulva that I made and hopefully it looks familiar. <laughs> uh, and so this is the clitoral hood. These are the labia minora. This is the vestibule. This is the urethra and this is the vagina, right? And so hopefully everyone is familiar with those basic parts. Um, and it fits over the clitoris like that. Um, and then, you know, there are the labia majora here and here. Um, and the gland sticks out. And often you have to retract the end of the clitoral hood to expose the glands. Okay, so hopefully no one is lost. Um, so I have dissected clitorises. And basically... Most of the clitoral hood is actually shaft skin of the clitoral body. So only the end of it can be retracted to expose the glands, which is just like a penile glands, but smaller. Um, so if you pull this back, you see the glands and it's just like that. It's like a little bulbous structure. And then this is the clitoral body. It's basically just like a little mini shaft. <laughs> and a lot of it is under the clitoral hood and you can feel it. So you can just go like this back and forth and you can feel a little mini shaft. And it's just like a penile shaft. In fact, the internal structure is extremely, extremely similar. And though the internal structure of the penis is always shown in anatomy textbooks, the internal structure of the clitoris is not, but it is really important, and it looks like this. So basically, these are the nerves. This is a cross-section of the clitoral body, and so basically the way it fits, if you're looking at a vulva, is like this. I'm going to need a much bigger one of these, actually, to illustrate this. Um, 
the clitoral head fits over it like this, and then the glands here, labia majora here, mons up here. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, this is a vein. These are little veins. These are arteries. These are arteries. One thing interesting is that in the clitoris, these deep arteries are right near this midline septum, but in the penis, they're in the middle of the corpora. These are called the corpora cavernosa. They are erectile bodies, so they engorge with arousal. Um, the penis also has them. The penis also has a third column that surrounds the urethra, and the clitoris doesn't have that. You can find cross sections of penises everywhere if you're interested, but this is unique. It's hard to find these. In fact, the illustrations that I had made for my study are the only anatomically correct ones in medical literature. A couple others have been published because I pushed for them. Um, two have been published in OBGYN textbooks. Another got published in a plastic surgery journal because I bitched at the surgeon on YouTube. <laughs> and he went and published them, which is awesome. Um, I want to see them in more textbooks, in more journals. I want this to be anatomy that is regularly covered. There are all kinds of excuses for not covering it, like we don't need to know that, but we don't need to know that for some reason doesn't apply to any macroscopic anatomy of the rest of the body. I have asked repeatedly if there are any major nerves of this size that also get omitted from anatomy textbooks. The answer is no. These are two to three millimeters in diameter inside the clitoral body, which is really crazy to think about. Um, they are really quite large um, and they're easy to dissect. They are just as big as the nerves in the penis. So there's no reason to always show them for the penis and then not show them for the clitoris. That's just crazy and it's sexist, right? Um, one thing that is understood is that penile anatomy is relevant to diagnosis, treatment, and management of erectile dysfunction and other male sexual dysfunction, but clitoral anatomy is not considered relevant to female sexual dysfunction. That's why when women like me present with sexual dysfunction, we're told it's all in our heads, or that we just need to relax, or that we just need to fall in love, or that we need to take hormones. Sometimes there's actually just something wrong. So treating female sexual dysfunction without considering the anatomy is like treating breathing problems without considering the anatomy of the lungs. It doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. So basically, this cross-section is taken from the middle of this. And though I realize there has been a lot of focus on the internal parts of the clitoris, the bulbs and the crura, those parts are not actually as involved in female sexual response as the clitoral body and glands. Um, they, they engorge with arousal, but as has been well established, most women orgasm from external clitoral stimulation. So this is what really matters. Also, these nerves are 3.1 millimeters in diameter at this point. They're 3.6 at a point around here, which is where we first started measuring them. Um, basically, they're really big nerves, and um, they're large where they enter the clitoral body. So... Uh, Basically, this is what matters, and if you have damage to these nerves, it really affects your sexual function. So, some women have been harmed in clitoral hood reductions, which are often done by surgeons who assume that the nerves are much deeper than they are. You can actually find experts in female genital cosmetic surgery describing these nerves as very deep. They are not very deep. I have dissected them myself. 
basically there's just skin and then there's a thin layer of fascia and then there are nerves beneath okay it's like fascia is just like thin fibrous tissue I don't know what to compare it to but just imagine just like here's a little piece of toilet paper just imagine this over a nerve I mean that's it so yes Surgeons who are knowledgeable can avoid damaging the nerves by staying superficial, by dissecting very carefully. But surgeons who don't know where the nerves are are going to be putting patients at risk. Um, so that's why it's harmful when this anatomy gets omitted from anatomy textbooks, from OBGYN textbooks, from urology textbooks, and from plastic surgery literature on general cosmetic surgery. Uh, I don't know what else to say. This is just really easy. Um, one thing that has happened recently is the founder of the Vagina Museum has accused me of harassing her. This is because I have repeatedly suggested that it would be helpful if she showed detailed clitoral anatomy in her museum. I even offered $10,000 in exchange for doing that. Um, I guess she wasn't interested. Um, I am very pushy, which is how I have managed to get three OBGYN textbooks to change. Um, it's how I've gotten nine more medical textbooks to agree to change. It's how I got an OBGYN to publish an anatomic study of the clitoris to get the innervation of the clitoris into OBGYN literature for the first time. It's also how I got my dad, a plastic surgeon, to help me publish my study. It's how I got Medscape to agree to change. It's how I got an anatomy app to change. I'm a pushy person. I'm the kind of person where if you don't answer me, I'm going to keep asking. And if you say maybe, I'm going to make sure that maybe is a yes. And if you say no, I'm probably going to try and turn that no into a yes. But I realize that that sounds rapey in these days. I think everyone's being a little too sensitive. Because sometimes when you're right, like I am when it comes to wanting clitoral anatomy included. It's worth being pushy. It's worth continuing to try when people say no. That's why the innervation of the clitoris is now in OBGYN literature. It's because I don't take no for an answer. Anyway, the founder of the vagina, whoops, I just stuttered. <laughs> the founder of the vagina museum does not want to feature clitoral anatomy detailed clitoral anatomy in her museum. The worksheets that they have on their website are anatomically incorrect. The clitoral body, this structure, is not even labeled. That's not very helpful. Um, yeah, one thing that happens often is people will mislabel the clitoral body as the glands, even though they are structurally and they're structurally dissimilar. It's very easy to tell the difference. Uh, if you took a cross-section of the glands, basically, it would all just be one color. It would, it's just one thing. Um, it's a different type of tissue, and there are no major nerves in it because they have arborized. They've split up into tiny little nerves that are too small to dissect. At least, too small for me. I don't know. There are methods I don't know about, but... Basically, they disperse. Um, no one would ever mislabel the glands of the penis. I'm sorry. No one would ever mislabel the shaft of the penis as the glands. So it's ridiculous that people do this with the clitoris. No one would ever not label the penile shaft in an illustration of the penis. That would be bizarre. I think at a penis museum, they would probably acknowledge the shaft of the penis. I don't know. Um, in patient education materials for men, they always include detailed penile anatomy. In patient education materials for women, they never include detailed clitoral anatomy. That's why a big museum, like the Vagina Museum, with a big platform, could really help disseminate that anatomy among lay women. And this could help spread awareness that doctors aren't learning it. Yep.
I'm going to have to redo this.